It's not possible, Mike. Okay, but Steve, what if I told you by implementing this platform, you're going to get immediate boost of 53% on your inbound marketing? Mm-hmm. Boom. Boom. And then we get back into it, right? Boom, boom, so boom, 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 this boom. is the cool music. So, I mean, that was a little bit of a joke on the intro, um, but what we what we learned was pretty exciting stuff uh, coming back from Acton Software's headquarters in Portland, Oregon, uh, this past week, where they held um, their annual partner summit, and we got to meet with um, better part of the whole team, actually, in terms of the executive team and the partner team and the marketing team and a number of just individuals kind of around mm-hmm. that organization. Excellent hospitality. Wonderful food and beer, right, Steve? Yep. We 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 part we partook in a few beers. Okay, <laughs> not not Good not too job, many guys. Good Kev job. Kev was doing dry January. Dry January. So I, I had I to, successfully completed. I had to. Yeah, he was successful. I can I can account. I can attest to that. I had to, I had to take one for him. Couple, couple <laughs> but first and beers. foremost, thank you to the Acton team. Everyone was amazing. So nice. So smart. Um, really great partners of ours. Yeah, so um, that was great. And what we learned was that they're really, um, I would say, kind of tackling this problem head on that we've been talking a lot about, which has been um, how to how marketers can have success with tools like this. So there's a little bit of joke at the beginning, just saying, you know, put a platform in and it's going to you can go golfing in the afternoon. We use that line a lot. Um, but that is how it's sort of been positioned, right? Would you say, Chris, in terms of even prior, we'll talk about what Acton is doing to address it, but how we're often brought in because they, um, customers are having a hard time connecting with the solution. Well, even just getting back to the statistics that are really well known is that the value that people are gleaning from these uh, platforms is really quite surprisingly small. In other words, you know, where um, even marketers themselves are saying that it's a really important piece to add to mm-hmm. their uh, arsenal, only, uh, you know, less than 25% of firms are actually getting full value out of the out of the platform which basically means there's a lot of value out there that's uh, that's not being realized yeah do and you think it, it has do you think it has anything to do with the fact that it's still such a young category within marketing tech and as a result people just aren't equating um the the need right away for a specialized agency I think there's a, I think that's largely like that's a, a large part of it. It's like it's uh, maturing that's uh, that's taking mm-hmm. place. But even like when you think about uh, the maturity of the CRM uh, world, like CRM has been around now for like 20 years, pretty close to 20 years. Um, a lot of people have CRMs that mm-hmm. are still not being fully, you know, again, fully realized. But now, like at this stage, there are um, investments being made in, you know, um, uplifting the value of that. And so we're mm, probably 10 years behind. I mean, yeah. that's the, the point is, it's, uh, you know, uh, our map platforms are about 10 years old now. And now we're starting to realize what value could be gleaned. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now uh, companies like Acton are deciding and and uh, promoting a uh, approach to elevating that value. So maybe we should get into the approach because the approach yeah. is cool. And I think it's legitimately innovative in a space that I don't think has innovated too much in the last few years. No. So, I mean, the... A lot of um, product companies are really focused on, you know, just selling licensing and just, you know, getting the licensing out there. And and as a, as a product company, as a software company, I mean, that's obviously critical. You have to have a, a great product. But as we've seen, probably to your point, Chris, not unlike established markets like CRM or e-commerce platforms where along with it is a pretty well-known understanding of the type of services that go alongside that, that implementation. So it's not uncommon for you to, oh, I'm going to do my CRM. I'm going to do my e-commerce, maybe my ERP, that's even more baked. And I'm going to I'm going to know that there's a level of service that goes along with it. I think what's happened in this market is that um, you know, the early the, the early adopters of this technology were marketers. They've got in, grabbed it, and and started running with it. And probably pretty technical marketers at that. I agree. Yeah. And and, and probably more the tech companies that grabbed onto it yeah. right away. And they ran pretty you know hard and fast through that system. And then we're seeing everything from um, probably the recurring themes are in the neighborhood of lack of strategy, um, or it's really not positioned strategically within their marketing and sales mm-hmm. organization as a as a piece that really needs to be there. It's been kind of bolted on, and we've talked about it that, that in the past. Mm-hmm. Onboarding, 
you know, Steve, I'm looking at you here. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at you onboarding. Um, but that's part of, you know, been the challenge too. Not everyone's been onboarded in that area. And then I think the other one that we're seeing a lot is just turnover in people. So whoever brought, I mean, Steve, even last week you were on, you were on a, a project for a client that the reason why we're in there is because the people that installed the platform have now left. Yeah, exactly. As being the onboarding and strategy manager is very key to the company because what happens is you have people that come in and they're the only person that's in there. And when they leave, they probably only done it tactically, like maybe send an email here or there, create a program, but they never create a process mm. to really guide the next person on how to do it. Right. And what it actually means for their company exactly. to have this. So Acton's come along and they've said, well, first, there's a couple things we're going to talk about that some things that we're, you know, we can't totally expose because it's sort of secrets and good stuff that's coming down the pipe later. But they have really taken the, uh, the stance now into 2019 and beyond to say, marketers need to be focused on outcomes. To your point, Chris, you know, that the people that aren't really receiving the value out of the system, um, it's more about cracking these strong onboarding, strong strategies, strong customer success over time. And they've started to adopt a, what they can call an outcomes based approach and layer in some services. Right, right, Kev? Mm -hmm. Like on the same, um, the same actual contract as the license itself, that's sort of a really strong one, two punch. Yeah. So, so there's a level of that sort of success that's embedded in, into the, the process right out of the gate. Um, so we wanted to talk about that because it's clearly a differentiator. I mean, clearly. how many how many deals have we been in? And we're not going to name the vendors where um, their licenses are almost thrown. And in some cases, it's been years of stuff hasn't even been touched. Well, that's sort of the standard is basically get that software in there. And, um, and uh, customers are often left. And maybe that's a part of the reason why you've got such a heavy turnover at that implementation sort of support uh you know, area in marketing, maybe that's because it's kind of like, you know, it's sink or swim, you're kind of in there driving value or not. And uh, the pressure would start to become pretty unbearable if uh, you're in the process of trying to sort of make this thing, um, you know, generate revenue, generate leads, mm -hmm. etc. And you really are just learning the product on the fly. Um, very difficult scenario to be in. And again, you know, why do you uh, uh, need to have a consulting uh, organization come in and help, you know, midway through a, a an implementation or, you know, part way, you know, through a year of trying to generate a value out of one of these uh, products, because it hasn't been sort of strategically and outcome based, you know, sort of mm -hmm. um, uh, delivered. Yeah. And on that note, it's sort of like, you're right. Um, one of the things I always think about is when it's not adopted strategically across the org, and there isn't a plan to do that, and it's certainly led with, by an executive. Um, if it's brought in and sort of owned by one person, like Steve was saying, the problem is when they leave, two things happen. One, there there isn't an alignment between the roles going to play in various departments, whether it's sales and marketing. And the other one is this new person who comes and assumes this this sort of technology. It's like asking a tattoo artist to finish someone else's work. Mm. And it's just like it's, it's a square analogy. peg in a round hole. And so does that even align with things? Does that person even carry the same sort of philosophy as to what this is supposed to do? And then as a result, it's you get, we get a call from someone, they say, hey, we're two years into this road, and I don't even know what path it's going down anymore. And I think, to the other point that you were making is, I think the services and strategy around marketing automation is very commonly an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so if you said whether you have one, which we know the stats that are out there, or you're new to getting something in place, it all starts with the platform. And I think what we've seen, you know, having the luxury of working with most of these tools today nine times out of 10, it's not a, the platform's problem. It's kind of easy to throw it out if, if there's a change of the guard and, you know, but it, for the most part, it very rarely would you say, Steve, that we're in a situation where you get into a, a project and it's like, oh, that's actually a system problem. Very rarely. Actually, it's mainly a people problem, right? Because if you didn't set up the process, we've seen, I've seen situations where I'm looking at it and all their folders are all over the place. There are some emails here individually labeled, but then it's not very well organized. And that's the biggest part of, you know, mm. getting the process right the first time, because once say maybe you move on or, or you become promoted and you need a junior, at least if you have everything set correctly, it'd be so much easier to teach them and have them roll. Like the, the, the best example of a successful implementation would be 
can this thing continue to run after mm -hmm. the person who oversees the implementation leaves? Right. So you've got platform if you say, well, Acton's clearly a leading platform. Then you've got onboarding. So, you know, we've developed and actually our, our original onboarding doing this for over four years now was actually based on Acton's onboarding checklist that we adopted and built up and created a very white glove approach to ensuring that, that um, accounts get onboarded. But onboarding tends to be the next big stumbling block, right, Kev, in terms of just making sure that you onboard your mm -hmm. platform and get it installed even before you start sort of executing against it. Yeah, th those marketing automation case studies don't talk about setting up subdomains and I don't know, like DKIMs and things like that, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's so I think marketers tend to want to jump into the deep end and say, let's get some, some campaigns and let's get some A-B testing. And then before you know it, you've skipped, you know, half the, the fundamental steps of implementing this tool. Mm -hmm. Right. And we, we had this joke last week, you're like, do marketers even know what these things are? I, I don't really. No. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, prior to like life as a marketing automation service agency, um, but beforehand, like I was using these tools years ago and no, I had no care really about what these things are, but they're critical to the day to day and ongoing success of these tools. Right. And then, so I think once, once you get your platform in, you onboard successfully, the next piece of the puzzle is really around what we refer to as accelerators. And I think at Acton's adopted that same language where mm -hmm. you're able to bolt on a quote unquote use case to accelerate, why don't you talk a little bit about that, Kevin, then we'll turn it over to, uh, to, to Steve as a build on it, to accelerate a really a marketing program, marketing campaign, but utilizing the entire underpinnings. Yeah, I think first of all, an agency who really knows these tools well can, can get their head around the bigger picture as to how that can drive the value first and foremost, what those steps would be. And the second part is getting there faster. And that's the other thing too is, there's this rush to adopt and get it in, and then it kind of goes by the wayside when either things get difficult or unforeseen things happen if you don't have that full vision. Mm. And so I think the role of this, as, as Acton calls it, the, the outcomes-based um, sort of solution is really about that and helping drive faster adoption and then faster value, however that's defined by the goals of why you're putting in this technology in the first place. Right, and they, they've actually come up with about eight kind of nicely organized against their model of inbound, outbound sales, you know, mm -hmm. enablement, loyalty, where you can pick off um, bite sizable accelerators with the knowledge that you're going to get a, you're going to get one of those in place. You're going to be utilizing a fair bit of the platform. And then you, you know, you're on to kind of learn a learning and be picking up maybe your next accelerator. You know, I think the most important thing too, is that most uh, business people are looking for that, I don't know, ROI. They're looking mm -hmm. for something fast. And so that's what an accelerator can do is to zero in on, okay, so here's a yeah. half a dozen or more sort of areas. So let's zero in on on uh, on one or two of these and get you some value quick. Yeah. What's really cool about the way these are laid out is they all have, um, you can see a world where they all work together, but yet they're independent. So if it doesn't matter one's particular business, we can start at any of those accelerators and move forwards, backwards, whatever. And we talk about the journey of adoption. And I think the goal is to one day be trying to adopt it across five or six or, you know, eight buckets of one's organization. But mm -hmm. what's cool is you can pick off, maybe it's the easiest one right at the gate. Let's get some momentum going with this technology exactly. in, in our company. And then from there, it's let's pick off another one. We're feeling pretty good about this. But that's the cool thing, I think, is it allows these uh, new Acton or new to be Acton mm -hmm. customers to say, mm -hmm. well, what's the most immediate need we have? Exactly. And let's address that quickly. Yep. Because yeah. now it's a business conversation about how to sort of zero in on that, uh, uh, you know, zero in, in, zeroing in on the uh, on what the um, executive wants to sort of um, focus on. Um, and then you're now talking their language. You're not That's talking right. about marketing mm -hmm. stuff. You're not talking about stuff that really doesn't compute for them. Yep. And the biggest advantage is the speed of iteration mm -hmm. rather than, you know, sitting here trying to figure out on your own getting a junior or someone in that team to figure it out with the accelerators, you get to iterate your campaigns a little bit faster because you're taking what other people have learned yeah. and be able to implement it much sooner. You know, we've talked a lot on this podcast and, and certainly with our clients and prospects, but this idea of let's just get like a minimum viable thing that we're all happy with. that doesn't embarrass the company. Let's just get it out there to begin learning. And then we'll start iterating from there. And that's kind of what these accelerators are designed for. We're taking a very strong foundation, something that we can all feel at least pretty good about, if not very good about, and then going and doing 
all these iterations that you're talking about. I just think that's so important. Like, what was it like two podcasts ago? We were talking about things are just moving too quickly now. Mm. We can't spend three months planning for something. It'll have changed by the time we launch whatever we plan for. Sure. So we have to adopt and react point. quicker. And that's what I think these accelerators, it's the perfect word, are designed to do. Yeah. So, I mean, we, uh, we've got the platform, the onboarding, the accelerators. We're very excited to be part of that process as a, as a, um, trusted partner to deliver those professional services and, um, extend Acton's value proposition and, you know, into the market. That's a good point. I think we should talk about that because we talked about that a lot, um, with them last week is this idea that we really are an extension of the act on experience and how one, we take that very seriously, but we also recognize, um, if we don't support the adoption and success of that first campaign with these accelerators and these foundational implementations, then the whole experience is like in total in some is, is gone and act on didn't really work for us. So I think we recognize mm -hmm. the role we play in, in, um, continuing that experience and following through to make sure that they're a really happy client getting the value that they initially thought they would from the tool. Yeah. And even if it's a, an existing act on client, which we've worked with many of them mm -hmm. that had the platform for a period of time before we come in and essentially look at shoring up any onboarding gaps and then moving straight into accelerators that also, that also works very well and is a is a keen message, right? It's a very common conversation because, uh, you know, again, two or three years ago, if you implemented to act on this accelerator program didn't exist and you were mm -hmm. basically in the same pool with everybody else, just trying to figure out how to get this thing up and running. You maybe went through two or three different people in the process and now, okay, we're ready to go. Absolutely. And now the people that are winning right now is uh, some people actually just take the learnings that they had at say the company two or three years ago and then they become like a consultant. Sure. And then they build a team of people where they can just go in there, take a look at their system and sort of accelerate it. It's kind of what Acton is doing now as a whole organization. Now right. they're seeing, well, you know, if there are consultants that are doing this, you know, we know our platform the best. We're the ones who created it. Mm -hmm. Why don't we develop a program around this to really help our customers, you know, get through the speed of iteration? Love it. So I think what that, that's pretty good on the services side. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to wrap up, but I think what would be great is to touch briefly on some of the product stuff because, I mean, there was some pretty wild yeah. stuff coming down the pipe. Um, so it was a partner summit, and so we were fortunate enough to see some of the things that they're thinking about, the way they're thinking about their platform, the role it's going to play in helping marketers do bigger, better things. Um, what can we say? What can't we say? I think um, fair to say they've been working on a lot of things related to UI, some really cool UI changes coming. I think most would probably expect that. It's probably due, right? It's been, I think, in its current UI probably a few years now. Mm. Um, so, man, some of it looks great, too. Really, really good, especially on the automated program side. That's really exciting. So mm -hmm. marketers are going to love that. I think the other thing is a lot more insight um, and detail into the adaptive journeys they announced Um I think going on a year and a half ago. Yep. And um, some of that is already starting to come to fruition and um, some pretty big things around adaptive sending are coming pretty soon. I, I don't want to say when in case they haven't quite released that. But, adaptive um, sending? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This just this idea of, um, and they've talked I think I know what that means, Kevin, it. but... Uh, yeah, like it's on their website we now. Okay. Um, but this idea of being able to send um, emails on a personalized basis, right? So if you give it a window, whether it's a 24 hour window, you say, I want this email to send on, I don't know, this Thursday, you can give it a time frame. I think it's probably the minimums like 12 hours or something, but it'll take historical data and performance of that contact. Say, well, that person's more likely to open it at 5 p.m. Therefore, we'll put it in the inbox then. Whoa. So I don't know the, the, the implications or, or sort of what's required for the database to be built up enough for that the, the, engine to actually be able to make that decision. But that's what they've been talking about. And that to me is one of the best examples of machine learning. Like, mm -hmm. it, cause sometimes you see AI and machine learning and it's like so far out that it doesn't even make almost sense. Compute or, or yeah. make sense. And I think um, when they announced the, the adaptive sending and this idea of sort of getting it right as on a one-to-one -one level, mm -hmm. that was really exciting. So they're making a lot of headway there and that's coming sooner than not. And um, as a marketer, I'm like, really gearing up to, to drive get those opens up. Well, I think goose wants to, I mean, when I said last week to them, I was like, we want to pilot this thing. Cause but it's they, really but exciting. they do have a lot of omni channel. If you want to call it omni channel or multi channel type of 
support that's coming down the pipe between yeah you know direct mail yeah so that's actually really good too they, they talked a lot about their vision and, and we kind of i feel a bit bad we grilled their executives about the vision they had for the technology and all that and uh, they gave a really good answer which was they kind of see themselves more as a um a multi-channel marketing platform mm-hmm. i think email is historically has been and will continue to be probably the most dominant form of of marketing channel Mm -hmm. um but they did talk a lot about whether it's direct mail whether it's text sms whether it's chat bots like we're seeing in probably the last two years like just integrating a centralized view and management engine of how that all works together yeah and being able to actually um you know drill down a, a set of data into one contact or profile that's kind of how they see things going and i think probably the other leading platforms would agree that's where they see it going to. And we've seen everyone making shifts to, to adapt that kind of vision. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, you know, Mark Acton's always really kind of catered to the marketer and, yeah. you know, really building that up where the, uh, the marketer, modern marketer of today, tomorrow can really just leverage a, a, an omni-channel solution and differentiate from these tools that are maybe more sales oriented but act on obviously powers a huge amount of sales enablement, but these, these things that they're doing are now really setting, I think the platform apart from, um, what, what maybe used to be referred to as just a lead, lead management, lead to revenue or yep. kind of basic automation. So lots of really fun stuff coming down the pipe. Obviously that's going to become more public and, and, um, and well known as they announce it. But yeah, so I think that's a wrap. Thank you. Uh, Portland. Portland's a beautiful city. I mean, beautiful. it's small um, and it's like a, quaint. It's a big city in the middle of the woods. Mm-hmm. It's in the middle of the woods. So Everybody waterway. likes waterway. Right waterway is all over. Area. People are constantly hiking and skiing and drinking lots of hoppy beer. Wow. <laughs> Constant, great craft beer. Over yeah, there. yeah. Great craft beer. Yeah. So can't wait to go back. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Cool. Thanks guys. Peace. Thanks. Peace.